this video has several objectives. Its first objective is to understand what a system of equations is. Another objective is, given the graph of the system of equations, determine whether the system has one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. Also, you want to be, to be able to describe slash interpret the solution of the system in the real world terms. That's the major part for my class. This last part here is something I'm throwing into the video, but it's not necessary for my class. It's to learn how to determine if a given point is a solution to the system of equations. All right. Vocabulary. For my class, you need to stop, pause the video, and write this down. Next, part two, more vocabulary. My class, you don't have to copy this down, but it's something you do want to learn about these things. Um, not as important for my class as it may be for other people here. When you're dealing with systems of equations, you're going to come across this stuff, and you're going to want to learn what they mean, especially when dealing with word problems and system of, systems of equations. For my class, again, you're probably not going to see this for our stuff. You won't have to worry so much about that. Solution of a system of equations. The solution, as we said, said earlier, is an ordered pair in a system that makes all the equations true. A system of equations could be more than one equation. In fact, it has to be more than one. It could be two, it could be three, it could be four, it could be five, but it has to be at least two, two or more equations together. And the solution is, is the ordered pair that makes every equation in the system true. This also happens to be the corner where the graphs for these equations cross. So if you've got two equations, you've got two graphs, we have these two lines here, where they cross, that is the solution to this system of equations. So that point right there, 1 comma 0, that is the solution to this system of equations. So if you're asked what the solution is, you would say 1 comma 0. What if the graphs do not cross? If you have two lines that never cross, what would the solution be? Well, let's see what that looks like. Here are two lines that are never going to cross. They're parallel. The solution would be no solution. They never cross, so there is no solution here. What if the graphs are exactly the same? Well, let's take a close look at that. If they're exactly the same, you are actually going to have infinitely many solutions. What? What does that mean? Well, here, let's graph one line. Here's one line. It's in blue. I've graphed it. All right. Now I'm going to graph the other line. It's the same exact equation. When I graph it, it turns green now. Those two lines are right on top of each other. This point here is on both of those lines. This point is on both of those lines. This point, and this point, and this point. All those points are on both lines. Every single point on every one of those lines exists on both of them. And there are infinitely many points on each line. So there are infinitely many solutions. Now, why would someone even look at the same equation as a system of equations? Well, sometimes when you first put the equations down, they don't look exactly the same. Let's take a look at these two. These two equations are not exactly the same in looks. But when you go to solve this one for y, you're going to find out that these two equations are exactly the same. They just don't look the same. So when you graph these two, they're going to end up being on the same line, and they're going to have infinitely many solutions. Here's the part that's really important for my class, interpreting the solution of a system of equations. The Bon Jovial Corporation is making widgets. The machine they use to make the widgets costs them $240, and it costs an additional $10 per widget for materials. They sell the widgets for $50 each. This situation can be represented by the following system of equations, C equals 10W plus 240, P equals 50W. Using the graph of this system, interpret the break-even point of this system of equations. All of that to just tell you what's the solution of this system. Well, what is the solution? The solution is the point where the two lines cross, right? Ta-da! There it is. All of this was extra information they fed you. Does it relate to this graph? Yes. Do we actually need it to find the solution of the system? No. 
Are you going to get questions like that on FCAT? Yes, you are. They're going to put all this information in because they do want to have that extra information there. But it's not necessary to find the answer. To find the answer, you read the coordinate there. That coordinate is 6 for the X and 300 for the Y. But that's just the coordinate. We're asked to interpret the break-even point. Oh, well, remember, break-even point is where these guys are going to be matching the same, where the money, the money they spend is going to equal the money they, they take in. That was one of the vocabulary words there. If you pause the video, you saw that. So that point is the solution. It's going to be when they make six widgets for $300. The break-even point is when Bob Jones case makes six widgets. After that, the company will make a profit. They will make a profit on every widget after that that they sell. Okay, the, com the company wants to know when they can expect to reach market equilibrium. Use the supply and demand graph at the right to figure out how many widgets they will need to make each market, to reach market equilibrium. Market equilibrium, according to the definition, is when the supply and demand graphs meet. It's the solution to the system of equations. It's that point right there. The coordinate for that point is 30,000 and comma 30, 30,000, because the widgets are a number of thousands here, and price is at $30. So if they price this at 30 bucks, they're going to sell 30,000 units and they'll sell them all. There won't be any extra demand, there won't be any shortage of product, they'll be great. So the company will re reach market equilibrium when they sell 30,000 widgets at $30 each. Notice how when I describe this point, just like when I describe points in uh, irregular equations, not just systems with regular equations, I describe both the X and the Y value. 30 for the dollars, 30,000 for the number of units. I include that both in my description. Describing or interpreting the point of the, the solution to a system of equations is as simple as describing the x and y value as it relates to the real world of the point where the two lines cross. Okay, now this point goes into something that my class doesn't need. If you're in my class and you're just you're watching this video for my class, you can exit out of the video and go back and get, get on with your day there. If you want to learn a little bit more, here we go. What if you are given a point in two equations and asked if the point is a solution? All right. Um, sorry about that part. That's from an older time. Plug. When you're given an, a point, an x and y value, and you're given a system, you need to plug the x and y values into both equations to see if it is a solution to the system. If both equations are true with those values, then the point is a solution to the system. Example, here's a, here's a system, y equals 2x plus 2, y equals 3x. Those are two equations, that is a system of equations. We plug in the values, 6 for y, 2 for x. So this y becomes 6, that x becomes 2. 2, plus two, two times 2 is 4, plus 2 is 6. So 6 equals 6, that is a true for that equation. Is it true for the other equation? Well, 3 times 2 is 6. So both sides are equal. So it's true for equation two. Then yes, this point, this coordinate, is a solution to that system of equations. Is it always going to work out that nicely? No. All it takes is one of those equations to not work with that coordinate. If I plug it into the first one and it didn't equal both sides, not a solution to the system. Doesn't matter if it works in the other. If it doesn't work in one, it doesn't work at all. It has to work in all equations within the system in order to be a solution. More examples. Here we have a point, negative 3, comma 5, and we got two equations. We plug them in. 5 for y, negative 3 for x. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, plus 6 gives me negative 6. Is 5 equal to negative 6? No, it isn't. So is this a solution to that system? No. Do I have to even go through that part here? No. Once one of them doesn't work, we know it's not a solution. How about this one? We plug in 5 and negative 3 in for the x and y values here. We get 5 is equal to negative 4 times negative 3 minus 7. 
Negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12. Minus 7 is going to give me 5. 5 equals 5. So far, so good. Let's look at the second one. We plug in this and we get 5 equals negative, negative 3. Well, negative over negative is a positive. So it's positive 3 plus 2. We get 5 equals 5. Yes, negative 3 comma 5 is a solution to this system, but not to that one. All it takes is one of them not to be. In this case, both of them were not right. But all it takes is one not to be right to make it not a solution to the system. All right. Uh, that point, we're going to leave from there. Hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.